Hello again, AP Calculus AB students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are about to get graphical, part two. We're going to take a look at examples five, six, and seven from topic 1.3, which is all about estimating limits from graphs. So if we move into our first problem, and I move my face out of the way so you can see example six, we see example five over here to the upper left. It doesn't really matter a whole lot if you have an idea of what the equation would look like that sketches a graph like this. It's really not part of what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, if you're wanting to know, I believe that that's probably the top half of an ellipse. But like I said, we're going to take that out of the picture and just focus on the graph that's given and find these individual limits. And so our first limit, part A, is as x approaches zero from the left side. So if we find ourselves traveling on this road and we kind of move towards that value of x that's zero on the left side, we slowly and surely seem to approach this y value that looks like it's pretty darn close to one. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and interpret it as. I'm not trying to trick you and say that the answer is like 1.01 or 0.99. That would be a pretty dirty trick. We're going to go ahead and read with the graph and accept these values uh, as being pretty nice integers. We do the same thing on the right side. As we approach zero from the right, lo and behold, we get a y value that is also equivalent to one. You probably remember in a previous video, we talked about how do you handle the, the uh, situation where your limit is approaching, in this case, zero from both sides. And it's just simply a matter of looking at part A and part B. And if those two answers agree with each other, <clears throat> then your answer is going to agree with both of those. On the other hand, if those answers are in disagreement, then you're going to have a limit that does not exist. And as far as f of zero is concerned, well, we're just really talking algebraically. What does the y value seem to equal when x is zero? Nothing to do with limits and we get one there. Now, for whatever it's worth, this is the only problem in these groups of seven examples from the previous video and now that has a, the unique characteristic of all four of these answers being the same thing. And you might sit there and think, yeah, so what, right? Big deal. Well, right now it's not a really big deal, but you're gonna find out as we move deeper into unit one, that's going to be a big focus of our conversation. And that defines continuity. You have a graph that is continuous. It's pretty clear that you can trace this graph from this left endpoint all the way to the right endpoint without ever lifting up your pencil. And it's because all four of those are the same. We'll get back to that in a few more videos. Let's take a look at example six just right above me here. And we've got the limit as x approaches two from the left. Well, as we move to two from the left side, we're kind of traveling over here. And we notice that we're moving farther down and farther down and farther down. And we're going to really go farther down. In fact, we're going to go, can I even say it? I think we're going to go down all the way down to hell, maybe. Well, that's not a very mathematical thing to say, right? And so what we're going to do is interpret this infinite amount of space way, way below the x-axis as being negative infinity. Now, on the flip side of that, if x were approached two from the right, then it seems like, well, the opposite would be going up to heaven, let's say. But again, we need something a little bit more mathematical here. And so we're going to say positive infinity is going to be the answer there. Now, for part C, by virtue of A and B not being a, a match, and you can't be really any farther apart than, say, negative infinity and positive infinity, we're going to say that this does not exist. And remember, we will accept the abbreviation D and E. I would prefer that you write it out, but I will always accept D and E. The AP exam will as well. And then for F of two, <clears throat> you notice that there really isn't anything that you see for a Y value when X is equivalent to two. And so the answer to that is going to be our good friend undefined. Now, a lot of times students will ask me, now, wait a minute, what's the difference between does not exist and undefined? Well, by and large, I won't really split hairs with those two phrases, and, and typically I will count them both correct, no matter which one you use. But the does not exist is typically reserved when some kind of a concept 
has no answer, a concept. Well, what do I mean by a concept? Well, in this particular problem, I would say that a limit would count as a concept. Later on in this course, we might see a derivative that doesn't have an answer. That's what I would refer to as another concept. It's like a, 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 a mathematical function that has some kind of higher meaning. Now, on the other hand, f of 2 over here, undefined, that was more of a value, just simply a number. Is, is there a y when x is 2? Well, in this case, no. And so whenever there's just some kind of a numerical value that doesn't exist, we typically would say undefined. A concept that doesn't have an answer, we'll say does not exist. And again, hopefully that doesn't bother you a whole lot. I'm not going to ever write a problem where it does not exist and an undefined or both choices in a multiple choice problem because that's way too confusing. All right, let's move over to number seven here. We've got a graph that looks a little bit like, a little bit like our number six, except, oh, we got this little dot right there. What do you guys think about him? So if we let X approach negative two from the left, we find out that we're going way, 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 way down, all the way to negative infinity. And another change in this example is that we have from the right side that same approach, downward to negative infinity. Now, by virtue of A and B being essentially the same, I suppose you could say negative infinity, and it's not wrong, but I want to share something with you. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to give you five minutes to think, or five minutes, five seconds to think about it. We don't have that long. Is infinity or negative infinity a number? Think about it. All right. I, I think I, I could read your mind. I think you all were saying no. Yeah, it is not a number. And therefore, if a limit does not have a numerical value, by definition, it technically does not exist. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in a future video. Now, I would not be upset if a student wrote negative infinity. In fact, of these two answers, I prefer negative infinity because it gives me a little bit more descriptive evidence about what's happening. If you want to know the best answer, it would be negative infinity, therefore doesn't exist. And you can use the three dots for therefore. Again, I would never write a multiple choice question, nor will the AP exam present a multiple choice question where each of these is an option. On a free response, it's likely I could write a question that says, find all of the following limits. If a limit happens to not exist, explain why. And part of your explanation could just simply be that the limit approaches negative infinity, and that would be enough. So you can see how it's kind of good to cover yourself in a free response by maybe listing both. And then, of course, our f of negative 2, I hope seems pretty straightforward in that you have this dot sitting here on the x-axis when x is negative 2. So there you go. Examples 5, 6, and 7, which round out our graphical approach to limits. Our next video is going to focus on a few unusual looking functions that don't have the graph provided, but you could certainly use technology to graph them and answer the question. Hope this helps. We'll see you next time.